Okay, so in today's video, I will be talking about how to care for and how to breed convict cichlids. My personal experience, it is very easy to breed these cichlids and they could possibly be the easiest fish in the hobby to breed. So for the general care of these cichlids, these cichlids will need to be heated between 79 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit, so I would suggest to heat the tank to around probably 80, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, so they can go up and down throughout the day if it's a hot day, cold night. They'll fluctuate naturally and your fish will still be nice and comfortable in their aquarium. These fish can be quite, quite aggressive, so I would recommend keeping them with other cichlids, not stuff like tetras, gouramis, angelfish, that type of thing. Probably won't work out for you. So in this tank, I have them in my general community cichlid aquarium. As you might be able to tell here, there are a few fish that don't really fit that. There are the like young Jack Dempsey cichlid and young Jaguar cichlid, who I am just growing out before I can put them in with my Oscars. They're too small at this point. But for the most part, the fish in here are just African cichlids. Convict cichlids are actually not African cichlids, they're South American cichlids, but they seem to work well with the African cichlids. So just keep them with the um, cichlids and other fish of the same temperament. So I have them in here with the African cichlids, and that seems to be working out quite well. These fish get decently large, as you can tell by the large dominant male in this tank. He's probably about five, maybe five inches, maybe a bit longer than that. So they max out at around six inches, I would say. So be sure to have a large enough tank. If you're looking to just keep them, not breed them, you could probably have a few of them in a 20 gallon aquarium, probably two or three. Wouldn't go more than that, but if you're looking to breed them, I would definitely go a little bit larger than a 20 gallon aquarium because the babies produce waste and uh, might be a little bit much for a 20 gallon aquarium. These fish are fed a high quality diet, so they have high quality pellets, good flakes, so, and then I mix in some other foods such as freeze dried food and occasionally just normal frozen food, which I defaw before feeding them. So it's important to mix up the diet of your fish. You wouldn't like to eat the same thing every day, neither do your fish, so make sure to mix it up and that they're eating high quality foods. That'll just help to keep them more happy, more colorful, might even help with breeding. Talking about, or speaking of breeding, there are a few things that you'll need to provide. Many hiding spaces, such as rocks or other artificial hides, such as the one in this tank, the um, ceramic pot there, flipped upside down, as well as I have an old lizard hide that I used to use for, or my brother used to use on his lizard. So just make sure you've got lots of hides in the tank, little areas the fish can go lay their eggs or whatever so the other fish don't eat them as well as areas for the babies themselves to hide so that they are not eaten by the other fish. The babies have gotten to a size in this tank where the other fish don't bother them anymore. And if other fish decide to try something, there are the parents to sort them out. Convict cichlids are very good parents typically. They do a great job of protecting their babies. So you won't have to worry about removing the fry from the tank. In my experience, I just leave them in. As you can see in this tank, they're doing just fine. Uh, good filtration is also very important. So I have a hang on the back filter, which does a pretty good job of uh, cycle or yeah, sorry, circulating the tank and adding airflow into the tank. I also have a submersible filter, which I'm more using as a pump, and it's providing constant circulation of the tank so that all the debris isn't settling on the ground and whatnot that it is able to be picked up by one of the two filters. These filters help um, keep the tank nice and clean and pairing that with constant water changes is um, very beneficial to the fish and helps to keep breeding. And as I had mentioned before, you will need a large enough tank to have the babies and the parents in. So like I said before, just 30 gallon aquarium or something, just enough so that you can have the parents and the babies in the tank can still support the bio load from those fish. Now, if you're having problems breeding your cichlids, one thing that might happen to you is your cichlids not actually pairing off and breeding. Like if you just have one male, just one female, they might not breed. So what I would suggest doing is having like a one to two ratio, one 
male for every two females. That way the male can choose which female he pairs off with or potentially have multiple litters at one time or batches of fry, I don't know what that's called, at one time, which is probably unlikely. But the more females you have, the more likely the male is to pair off with one of them and the more likely he is to, he is to breed. And one thing that you can do to trigger breeding as well, like if they are paired off and just not breeding, is a massive water change. So what I've done in the past to get these convict cichlids to breed are large water changes. For some reason, something about the new water tank, new nice clean water, uh, just tells them it's a good time to breed. The tank's nice and clean for them at that point, so then they go and uh, do their thing. So if they're not breeding for you, I'd probably try about a 60, 75 maybe percent water change. Just lots of new water, maybe even redecorate the tank, and then that might spark breeding for them. One problem that I personally encountered is after breeding, the parents might view each other as threats to their babies. I don't know if this is uncommon, but it happened to me, so I'm going to bring it up. The dad in this video is about twice the size of the mom, maybe even three times the size of the mom. And after their first batch of babies, the dad viewed the mom as a threat to his children and nearly killed her. That's why, as you can see in this video, her tail is nearly non-existent. So just be aware of that, that there is a chance they might have a falling out, for say, after their babies are born. So you might want to have like a separate tank to move the babies to or to move the parents to if something's happening like that. So just be aware of that. And another thing that can happen which hasn't happened to me, luckily, is the parents just eating their fry. Like, first-time parents or whatever might have the fry, and then they don't know what to do, and they just end up eating them. So if you're dedicated to, like, breeding the cichlids for profit or whatever, you might want to remove them from the tank, but it's not necessary. I've found that that's not necessary in my case, but your cichlids might not be the same as mine. They're all very different fish, so you might find that necessary. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys found it interesting and found the information you were looking for. Please like the video and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for stopping by.